This is a run through Dark Souls Remastered with no armor and no deaths. And of course there's also a nude mod because even the bikini rags are too protective for my tastes. I'll be jumping around through the footage and commentating, but if you want the full unedited VOD, I'll link to the live stream in the description. I went with a knight as my starting class because it has pretty good HP and strength, and even an attunement slot, at the cost of not much endurance, which isn't as important when you're not wearing armor. You're always going to be fast rolling anyway. Nothing special about the asylum. Your grandma can do this part standing on her head. In Firelink Shrine, I immediately turn human and grab some things, and kill a few skeletons. I try to use as many items as possible on elevators to be more efficient with time. I level up to 16 strength for the Claymore, which will be my weapon of choice for the run. Since I'll be going down the lightning path, there's no need for more strength than that because that removes my scaling. Murder some people for the humanity and for the swag. Ooh, and the bleed proc. The ring of sacrifice will be useful later against Seath. I get lucky enough to find a humanity on the rat's corpse. I'll be popping every hard humanity I have almost immediately, since there's no fear of me losing it. Soft humanity actually gives you more defense, more item discovery, and more curse resistance. Of course it's also useful for kindling bonfires, but I end up only kindling two bonfires in the whole run. I get an axe drop, which I use for a little while because it has decent attack power for this stage of the game. Grab the key, some black fire bombs for the hydra, and the gold pine resin. Kill the Black Knight for the Titanite chunk, get another chunk from the Crystal Lizard, which is really only helpful if the other one also drops one. Spoiler, it doesn't. Switch back for the Mace, just for the bleed against Taurus. See? Run past the Hellkite Drake and grab the Claymore. Take out the other Black Knight, like some kind of racist. I make my way to Andre and level my sword up to plus four. I've found firebombs one of the fastest safe ways to get through all the skinny hollows. I can only buff my sword until I infuse it with lightning, so there's no need to be stingy with the gold pine resin. I use one for the gargoyles, which makes the fight feel like clubbing baby seals. One bell down. I didn't get lucky with the Titanite drops, so I have to buy three more to level up to plus five. Go get yourself. So I need 14 in order Start investing to souls into Int so I can get to the coveted 14 needed for Hidden Body and Cast Light. I'll be buying those from Dusk after the Hydra. The main thing I'll be leveling in this run is Vitality. It goes a long way towards compensating for the lack of armor at least in terms of how many hits you can survive. It does nothing to help with the complete lack of poise I have, so every little pinprick still staggers me out of any animation. Can you move your arm, please? I make what is, in hindsight, probably a pretty unnecessary detour to get the wolf ring. It gives you more poise, but I'm not sure it gives you enough to make any difference when you don't have any armor. Here I get unlucky with the other lizard and get no extra titanite. Grab grass crest shield for the stamina regen. The hydra is one of the scarier parts of the run because they can spit you to death and you can't roll through it. And when you get close, you have to be careful not to fall in the hole. Plus that last head just keeps moving further and further away. That's why I just use black fire bombs on it. Oh god. Oh. The golden golem actually gets really dicey. 
but I stick it out and refuse to heal so I can still have eight flasks on Sif without having to kindle again. Ho oh. ho! I invade Dusk's personal space, buy the spells and the catalysts, and head up the ladder. Hidden Body is incredibly useful for getting past the Sonic the Hedgehog cats here without having to fight them. I joined the Forest Hunters just for my favorite ring so I can do ninja flips. I use Gold Pine Resin on Sif because he's meant for later in the game and I'll be doing pretty crap damage with just a plus 5 sword. But I did want to take him out now so my route can be somewhat efficient. For my own sanity if nothing else, because dying to the bed of chaos 4 hours into a run is pretty demoralizing. Anyway, Wolfie goes down and I warp back to the nearest bonfire to Havel. By the way, Homeward Bones are so good. If you aren't using them, you should be. I dump all my souls into Vitality and kill Havel. The ring is worth 1000 souls from Frampt. In most builds, it's one of the best rings in the game, but it's pretty useless to a naked girl. <laughs> Havel's tower leads me nicely to Lower Undead Burg where I free Griggs and murder all of the citizens. Hidden Body is again very useful on Capra Demon, so you don't get immediately ganked to death. Claymore does pretty high damage to Capra himself, so the fight is over pretty quickly. Why is that second that follow-up attack so short-ranged? Like, I have to be, like, inside of him in order for that to actually hit. Grab the large ember, make my way through the aqueduct, buy a bow, and finally back to Firelink Shrine to buy Great Soul Arrow and Magic Weapon. The fundamentalist Christians are pissed at me for the earlier slaying of someone they would otherwise spend the entire game refusing to acknowledge, so I have to put them down. Ow. You attacked me first. And it does grant me seven humanity. I dispatch Griggs because at this point I'm just a heartless killing machine. Prepare yourself. <laughs> Next I spend 20 seconds having an existential crisis until I'm back at the asylum for the two hour reunion. I trade some rubbish for a titanite chunk and go pay a visit to Stray Demon. Again, my damage isn't great, but I really want to get the Rusted Iron Ring before going to Blight Town, and eventually I'll need that slab for my sword. Oscar provides me with a Crest Shield, which has great magic damage reduction. Final Gold Pine Resin on the Undead Dragon because he has a lot of health. Grab the Dragon Crest Shield and down to Blight Town. I let the Toxic from the Dragon stick around because it's much less potent than the Blow Dart Toxic, and the latter can't do anything if I'm already afflicted by the former. This is another great place for Hidden Body, by the way. You can take all of them out without getting shot at. Grab my third Firekeeper's Soul and down I go. This is where I meet the game's other nudist. You'd think that would be a point of common interest we could bond over, but it just leads to arguments and of course I have to kill her. I grab some large titanite in the swamp and buff up for Quaylag. I get an early 1200 damage by freehanding my spells at her human part. I mostly stay to the side and smack her with my sword. He really likes an attack today. I finish her with two more spells right in the kisser. And that's the second bell down.
Report back to Firelink Shrine and it's on to everyone's favorite funhouse, Sen's Fortress. After I level my sword a bit more. Take out the bouncer for another chunk I'll need later. Grab the ring of steel protection to replace the fat ring. It's almost like having a piece of armor on without costing me my stripper license. I rescue Logan before making my way further up the fortress. I don't get any large titanite drops from the little tower knight, so I just buy one. Finally, getting my sword to plus 10. Now I have honestly one of my worst ever fights against the iron golem. To make matters worse, he refuses to stagger until near the end. But in the end, he goes down, which brings me to Anne Orlando. Great magic weapon is worth picking up just for Ornstein and Smo. I don't want to go down the lightning path until after them because they're strong against lightning. The archers don't put up much of a fight. Grab the occult club for Needle later, and some coins for Frampt. ONS aren't really scary at all. As long as you have enough health to survive a few hits and you know how to be patient and manage your camera, they're a lot less scary than the DLC bosses, or Gwyn. shielding me. Undead, I... Now comes the Lightning Claymore. You can see I'm one Titanite chunk short of going to plus four, thanks to that selfish lizard earlier. So I'll have to pick up some more later and come back. I buy homing soul mass from Logan, get a mouth job from Noodleneck, and head back down to Lethal Lava Land. Ceaseless decides to disable my roll button and nearly kill me several times. I, in return, remind him that I majored in ninjology and kill him all the way. Next up is Demon Fire Sage, who is like a much more annoying stray demon because he keeps hopping backwards like a prick. And then we have Centipede Demon, 
He likes to hide way out in the lava and throw punches at you because he's a social anxiety disorder. He goes down pretty easily. What are you doing? And finishing off the fiery gauntlet is, of course, Bed of Chaos. This is the reason I went here first instead of New Londo Ruins to get my sword to plus five. If my run's going to come to an end on the Mistress of Bitch Laps, I'd rather it happen as early as possible. The second branch is usually the scariest part. So just for this run, I learned a new safer strategy that requires a bow. You don't even need the stats to use it effectively. This is the other scariest part, trying to jump onto this branch without missing, while also being quick enough not to get broom handed. And of course, she tries her firestorm on me in desperation, but nothing's gonna save her at this point. I kill Spider Lady for another Firekeeper's soul. Oh what, I'm the monster now? I can't help it if my bloodlust is insatiable. Next is Spooky Haunted Houseland. I can't use Hidden Body here because it conflicts with Transient Curse, but also the ghosts seem to be able to see you anyway, which is not something I realized before trying this run. Come on. Fortunately, Transient Curse seems to run out just before the boss, so I can use Hidden Body to grab my final Titanite chunk and then take on the Four Kings, aka the reason Crest Shield exists. Unfortunately, I'm not passing the damage test here, and they keep pulling all these stalling tactics on me until there's actually three kings on me oh, at once. You know what? That pretty much forces me to quit out and go level up my sword before coming back and trying again. And while trying to take the shortcut, something happens I've never seen before. A ghost shows up and blocks me in midair, so I miss the jump. I thought I might die from fall damage here, so I try to quit out, but a little too late. Anyway, it doesn't cost me that much time. Please don't constantly explode on me. That was bullshit. He showed up at just the right time. Staggering me out of my... Oh, come on! Again, I get really bad RNG and spend all of my time dodging BS attacks, so one more quit out and on the next try I finally get them. It just continues to be a hitbox. No matter how well you time your dodge, you don't have enough high frames. You're gonna do as much bullshit Two Lord Souls left. Back in Orlando, I murder another firekeeper and a couple of pigs. Don't walk away like you're the bigger man. You're the deader man. Kill the welcoming committee and get a broken pendant before going to the top of Duke's archives for my job interview. I didn't get it. I break out of jail and prevent my new girlfriend from running to the police. Oh! <laughs> Once again, Hidden Body makes this area a lot safer. Itchy. Oh, no. 
too slow. Now Logan actually escapes from prison without your help if you just kill Seath. Which is good because there's no way I'm making that run back down with the key just for homing crystal soul mass. After walking in the air, walking in the air. I stroll on into the boss's office and remind him about affirmative action. I buy some crystal from the local meth dealer and then it's down to the catacombs. I give myself a heart attack doing a drop down skip. <laughs> oh my god, that was scary. <laughs> oh. Pinwheel happens. Next is the whole reason for cast light to exist. If you're going to play this game much, it's definitely worth your time to learn the optimal path through Tomb of Giants. I let Patches knock me into the pit so I can get a twin humanity, and then return the favor. Speaking of learning the optimal path, I stupidly forgot the hole I need to go down is a little bit further, and this happens. <laughs> the quit out here is pretty bad because it kills my invisibility and my light. Isn't it funny how poison and other status effects persist through quitouts, but your buffs don't? Classic Dark Souls. Okay. Leroy Jenkins tries to tell me about his lord and savior, and I ask him politely to come back later. In Nito's emo-themed bedroom, I start by divine bonking the skeletons. The rest of the fight isn't especially remarkable. He dies, though. You should assume that's how all these fights end. With the Lord Souls down, the only other mandatory boss left for the run is Gwyn. But I do enjoy fighting Artorias and Manus, so down to the DLC I go. After starting the Sanctuary Guardian, I remember I forgot to put the Dark Wood Green Ring back on. Not my favorite DLC boss. I send him to the animal shelter. I kindle this bonfire to plus 15 and run straight for Artorias. No need for shortcuts and a deathless run. I don't even try to heal on Artorias. It just feels too risky. It actually gets really close though. You really have to learn all of Artorias' moves and remember which ones you can punish and which way you have to roll for each. Okay. I'm afraid to heal because that's what's going to get me killed. I need to keep doing what I know works. Give me another punishable attack, please. Oh! Oh! Getting down to the wire. Please don't die. Do anything stupid. Just do what you do. At last I prevail, <sighs> so it's onward to Manus. First I grab the silver pendant. Wait, is that the broken pendant I picked up in the future? I never made that connection before just now. Anyway, it's nice to have against dark spells, though I never end up using it in this run. Slip through the local gank squad and it's down the elevator. I'm just noticing I have 14 Estus Flasks, which means I've only healed once between Mushroom Lady and here. And that means I don't need to kindle again. 14 should be plenty for Manus. I get Dark Bead and then promptly forget to ever use it. I'm normally good at this fight, but the lag in the roll button combined with me trying to heal with the Pendant sends me to single digit HP land. 
At this point, I don't care about dodging anything, and I just heal in a oh panic. God. Thanking the four lords, I didn't stop leveling vitality one point sooner. A little advice for this fight. Unless you can really tank him and outdamage him, light rolling is a lot more important than the defense you get from heavier armor. Especially when he pulls out the wombo combo. You can see even at max level my lightning claymore isn't doing much damage. On a normal run I usually go for black knight greatsword. But that requires a lot more strength and dex and I really wanted to put a lot of points into vitality. Even get to punish him? Finally, he has the decency to stop breathing. I grabbed the Elizabeth mushrooms to give me a bit of a boost on Gwen. I like to use the Dragon Crest shield on him for its good fire damage protection. Obviously, you'd rather roll or parry than block, but his quick swing is impossible to parry. Even after all the dozens of times I've played this game, Gwen still scares me, especially when he can end a five hour run in an instant. He can kill you so fast. I mean, look how much damage he did in two swings. I just quit out so I could take a breath and compose myself. Holy shit, I'm scared. Okay, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, Jesus Christ, he's never gonna give me a chance to heal. Whatever I do is gonna be wrong. He staggers in two hits with a claymore, so knowing that makes it easier to plan your strategy. If I dodge a grab or a kick, that's a free stagger. For parrying, I like to roll through the first swing and parry the second. That seems the most consistent to me. You can also chain parry him by chugging Estus every time he's recovering from your repost, because he's supposed to follow it up with a slow swing. But sometimes he breaks the rules and hits you with a quick one, so I didn't try it this time. And finally, he takes a knee, ending the run and establishing me as the hero in my hometown, maybe. Let the true dark be cast upon the world. I'll leave you with a short clip show from my previous attempts. Holy shit.
Keep drinking, keep drinking. What? Best defense is gonna be be really good. Oh. Off too. Jesus Christ, you as well. Sif is dead. Holy shit. That was so close. Maggots. 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 Maggots, maggots, maggots. <laughs> 